Hey guys, welcome back to Just Being a Mom podcast. And we are here with Vanessa. She's actually been on the podcast before, so she's a second time visitor. Thanks for coming back. And um, she is going to share her birth story with her son. Um, Tell us a little bit about your son, Vanessa. So my son is eight months. Um, He is thriving. He's doing really well. He's already, you know, crawling and pulling himself up, getting himself into trouble, chasing him, all the things. So, but he's doing really good from where we came from. Yeah, he's growing and he's a happy little boy. That's awesome. Well, before we get started, guys, with Vanessa's birth story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And um, Vanessa will let you know where you can reach her on social media and all the things that she does. Vanessa, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, guys. So yeah, I'm Vanessa. I'm from Toronto. And um, yeah, I've got two little ones now. And um, yeah, you can find me on uh, Instagram. It's just Outdoor Mama, M-U-M-M-A. And I'd love to connect with you. (laughs) Awesome. Okay, Vanessa, so let's get started. So the day you go into labor, what's happening? (laughs) <laughs> all the things yeah wow well you know it's that day you are waiting for and uh <laughs> being your second um you know you kind of have an idea of what you're getting yourself into you're like okay I've done this before and you know you're feeling I felt a lot more prepared than my first um but as they say and it's so true every birth is completely different I didn't want to believe it <laughs> Um, because I had such an amazing, not that I didn't have an amazing birth, but I had an amazing, perfect, you know, birth plan, uh, that all came to, to fruition with my first. And then with my second, it was like the complete opposite. Um, so yeah, so I was actually, I went early with, um, with my son and I was 39 weeks. So I procrastinated a little bit too much, probably with getting things ready and packing my bag. Um, You know, I was, I had a a sign like a few days before it all happened. I was like, I don't know. I just got, I think I started getting like Braxton Hicks and I was like, oh, I better get my stuff together. (laughs) So um, I spent those, those days uh, when I got that sign, like packing, getting things ready. So I was washing dishes um, after dinner and my water broke. (laughs) That was how it all started. I was in the kitchen and, you know, my daughter runs over. She's like, mommy, like, are you okay? You know, she didn't understand what was happening. And I kind of had a moment of shock, you know, like it's happening. And, you know, I think, um, you think it's going to happen so fast. I think, you know, we all, you know, there's that saying that you're in your second, everything happens so fast. So I had it in my mind that, okay, things might be a lot quicker this time. So as soon as my water broke, I was like, oh my goodness, like I got to get my bag. I got to, you know, just start. I had to clean up. I hadn't taken a shower, like all the things you worry about that are so silly. Right. I was like, I need to wash my hair. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, I just like, pet like I was like in a panic like getting my hair washed like getting my bag and just making sure I was ready we had to because I have a daughter we had to make sure we had care for her so we were trying to frantically get all that happen in the meantime I had no contractions <laughs> it was just nothing happened and I was just I, I couldn't believe it right like no contractions and it wasn't until about midnight um, where I started to feel like something happening. So, you know, it really taught me to just stay calm and, you know, things don't always happen as quick as you think they're going to, um, and to just take a deep breath. So, um, you know, through the night I started, it, there was just no pattern. It was kind of like, I got a contraction here and there, but nothing was really building that I could say, yeah, I'm getting closer. So that was a little bit frustrating. I was like, okay, why is it taking so long? And then, you know, you you worry about getting induced. I was like, I don't want to get induced. Like, I want this to happen naturally. So, you know, I was like hoping that by the morning, because my midwife said that um, if I I wasn't moving along, that I would have to do a stress test and then we could look at the next steps. So I was really just hoping things would move along. 
And they did. It was about four in the morning when my contractions started to become more steady. And like, you know, I could tell that, you know, when they were coming, like every minute. Um, and so I got, I was like really excited about it. And then at like eight o'clock in the morning, like it just stopped again. Like I, the contraction slowed down and I was like, what is going on? Like I was getting so frustrated. I was, so my awesome husband that I love so much, he, um, you know, he could see that I was getting a bit worried about it. And he, so he started looking up online, like pressure points and like, so he started doing all these like pressure points on my feet and my back and, and believe it or not, it actually worked. <laughs> so I don't know if I just got really relaxed or he was, I don't know, he's like a miracle man. So my contraction started again. Um, I called my midwife and they were, you know, it was up to that like pattern again, where I gave her a call and I said, okay, I think I'm, you know, I think I can start heading to the hospital. Like, I think I'm, you know, the contractions are moving along. So, um, we grabbed our bags, we headed over to the hospital. Um, and she met me there. I was feeling really good. My plan this time was I wanted to get to the hospital before I, got into like heavy, heavy labor where it was uncomfortable. It was still uncomfortable, but I was able to walk in, right? Um, got a room and then I just went through and I was like, okay, this is going good now, right? There's a flow. Um, you know, I had the lights dimmed and the music and I just like had that experience I wanted to have, right? Um, I had my things that I didn't have with my first birth that I was like, I want to have these things just to stay really calm and relaxed You use the shower and the labor was going great. Like I, I didn't even use the bed. I was just walking around the whole time. Um, my husband did a lot of like, you know, just massaging my back and, and the midwife was doing a lot of, um, pressure points and stuff to help me. So it got closer to uh, the time where I was like, okay, I, I, cause I've been through this before. I was like, I can feel that I'm getting close to like transitioning. And I, like, I feel like I need to push, like you get that feeling. Right. So, um, you know, I was excited cause I was just like, Oh, I just need to, by this point it was, um, it was almost nine o'clock. So I was at the hospital from like 4 PM to 9 PM. Oh, well, 9 PM. I started to feel like, okay, I need to push. So, um, I really didn't feel comfortable on the bed. So I, I, my plan was I was going to stand up on the end of the bed. So I had a standing kind of leaning over the end of the bed and my midwife was like underneath me. She was like, okay, we'll I'll catch the baby from you like standing. I was like, okay, well it was a little, it was much different from my first where I was on the bed. Um, so she's, you know, she's getting under me and then I could hear like this commotion happening. Like he would, I could feel that he was starting to come out. Um, and she said, okay, yeah, I can see that he's coming through. And, and then all of a sudden, um, yeah, there was just like this change in energy that happened. And I was like, what's, I kind of could sense it, right? Like something's going on. So she called the other midwife to come over and have a look. And then she, he had a, the meconium, I think that's what it's called. So like, it just like fell to the floor and she was like, okay. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, what? Like, um, and all I heard at that moment, and it just put me into like this panic <laughs> and it was, um, she told the other mid midwife call pediatrics. We have a breach. And like my whole body was just like, frozen. I was like, what? Like, what do you, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I was like, what? Like, what do you mean a breach? Like, I'm confused. Like I am. And my husband was like, he was also like having a look and seeing, cause so basically his bum was coming out <laughs> first. And that's why he did a poo, <laughs> which is really gross, but it just happened. And, um, that's how he made his entrance into the world, but oh, wait, yes. <laughs> coming out of your vagina. Yeah. That was like the meconium just like landed on the floor and he peed too. <laughs> so, <laughs> just to give you all the details. Um, 
yeah, so he made definitely a statement <laughs> coming into the world. Um, but all of a sudden, like the energy changed, pediatrics came running in, um, bunch of nurses. It went from this like relaxing, quiet, peaceful, just the midwife and I and my husband to just lights being turned on, um, a bed being rolled in to like nurses filling the room and the, um, the, uh, doctor that was going to now deliver the baby, like things were getting changing. Um, and cause I hadn't done a lot of research on a breech birth. I didn't really know like what was going on. All I was thinking in my head was like, okay, like, am I able to have this baby? Like I, didn't get an epidural. And in that moment, I was like, okay, I wish I got the epidural. <laughs> Cause I was like, I don't know. Am I going to just, all I kept thinking was like, how do you have a breach? Like, I didn't know anything about having a vaginal breached birth uh, without an epidural. So, um, I was just praying to be honest. Like, I was just like, oh, God, like I just need to stay calm. And that was what I told myself. Like, and I'm grateful. I did all the like hypnobirthing and I did a lot of like meditation and stuff leading up to it. And that really saved me. Like, I just really had to hone in and be like, Vanessa, like you got this, like you got to stay strong in this and you got to just believe that you can do this and everything's going to be okay. Like that was what I told him. And I just shut my eyes and I just took deep breaths. Um, so the doctor that came in, um, she was amazing. And she just said to me, Vanessa, like, you need to get up on the bed. So I'm like, baby's like, you know, already popping out. And I'm, so I tried to get up like on all fours on the bed. And they were like, can you, she said to me, like, can you flip over on your back? And I was like, no, like, if you have like a baby almost coming, I was like, I am not moving. Like, I'm not moving. So she was like, okay. So they basically just like draped a blanket over my back <laughs> and they moved me. They like lifted me up and put me onto the OR bed, like to transfer me to the, uh, OR room, like operating room in all this. I was like, I didn't even understand what was happening. Cause typically uh, we all know like a C-section if is what would happen if you had a breached baby, right? If they were in a breech position here in Canada, and I know in America, it's a similar, it's, it's C-section, right? Um, so I was, yeah, I didn't, I really didn't know what was going to happen, but I just, you know, said whatever's meant to be will happen. Right. And as long as I'm safe and as long as the baby is safe, that is the most important thing to me. So they got me rolled and rushed over to the operating room. Um, and I just closed my eyes the whole time. I was like breathing and focusing. Um, I didn't even know where my husband was. Like, I like, honestly, when you're in that moment and with birth, I think it's just, you're in this like different zone and like this different world that I can't even explain. And I'm sure you know what I mean, but, um, I basically got rolled in and I, um, and this doctor, Dr. Mary Malachior, I believe is how you pronounce it from St. Joe's hospital in Toronto is the most amazing doctor for anyone listening to this. Like she just gave me, she like empowered me to believe in myself. Like she just looked at me and she was like, Vanessa, you got this, like, you can do this. I can, I'm going to deliver your baby like as safely as I can. And like, you can do this. And like, just those words, like in that moment was what I needed to hear. And yeah. So like the next, she said, the next contraction you're pushing with everything you got. And so I was literally on all fours in an operating room, you know, no epidural. And, um, and that next contraction, I like pushed, like you wouldn't believe. And he just was born. And it was the most amazing, like I, for, there was this moment where I just didn't hear anything. And I was like, oh, you know, you have that moment as a mother, you're like, oh my gosh, is he okay? And, um, I just heard that cry that we all want to hear. And I was like, oh, and they, you know, because of the way it all happened, they had to check and make sure he was okay. Cause he was born breached. 
So they brought him, I didn't get to hold him right away. They brought him over and like cleaned him up and like checked his vitals and his, the hips are like the most important thing like that they worry about with uh, breached births uh, because they are the way they're sitting in the, in um, your body. So yeah, they did all the checks and um, yeah. And then they brought, and then they got me to like turn over finally onto my back. <laughs> Um, and at this point, I didn't know where my husband was. This was the crazy thing, right? Because of COVID and everything, they had to like get him all dressed up. So he didn't get to see the baby. Um, by the time I pushed and everything, he wasn't get, he didn't get to see it sadly. Um, but it was funny because there was this male nurse and he was just being so kind and gentle. And he was putting his hand on my shoulder towards when he was already out when my baby was born and I was like oh this male nurse is he's so kind and and then he came in to like give me a kiss and I was like whoa and then I found and then it was Michael it was my husband and I thought oh my gosh <laughs> so but you're just in like I said you're just in this like different world like and um yeah I was grateful that he was there at you know when after he was born you got to like hear him cry and be there for that moment to like hold him for the first time um but yeah it was honestly um and very interesting to a lot of twists and turns and I did never expected uh for it to go that way um I'm just blessed that he came out safely that I was safe that he was safe and I'm just so grateful for all the medical staff and the doctors um and the midwives like they were so supportive and awesome oh my god it sounds like you had the best team for this situation <laughs> I was in really good hands I really really was you're an amazing hand yeah uh, the doctor that, pardon you did amazing. Thank you. Well, yeah, the doctor that it's delivered so my son. Oh, thanks. I, I know. Like as women, like what we go through and what our bodies are capable of, and like our mind is like, we're just so um, like women are, and birthing. The whole thing is just like amazing. And like, you know, you could be in the most traumatic moment of your life and feel like whoa like I don't know if I can do this but as women we have so much power and strength inside of us that we don't even know until we're in that moment and we're like wow like I did that you know and uh yeah and we can really get through anything like we're so strong as women okay but tell us about your recovery what was recovering your body look like after breech baby <laughs> Yeah. So the recovery, interesting. Um, I mean, I didn't do a lot of research about other women that have a breech birth. Um, I luckily, um, I don't even know how, because I was most worried about tearing and I did not tear at all. Like, I don't know how I just, maybe my body, um, you know, remembered, I don't know from like the first one. And then my son was actually born quite small. He was the 10th percentile, under the 10th percentile. So he was only six pounds. Thank God, right? Because he was so small that they said that that's what really helped with the breech birth is that he was on the smaller end. Um, and because um, you're having the bottom come out first, not the head, you don't have all that trauma of a head pushing on your cervix for hours and hours. So actually, I don't know what other women's experience are. I can't speak to that, but my experience, I didn't have as much trauma, vaginal trauma, because, um, I think because it was a soft bottom, like rather than like that hard pressure of a head. So my recovery was a lot easier. Like it was still challenging, of course, and it was a recovery, but it wasn't, um, it was a lot, the recovery was quicker. Um, it was definitely quicker, um, because, I didn't have that same trauma that I had, um, with my first. Um, so I think that helped a lot. Um, but yeah, lots of sits baths, <laughs> um, lots of nourishing foods and broths. I really tried to, there's a book it's called the first 40 days. One of my good friends bought it for me and I would recommend anyone having a baby to read it. I'm trying to see if I have it here on my bookshelf. It's called the, I think the first 40 days and it's, um, it provides a lot of 
it, great information on like nourishing your body, giving your body what it needs, like after having a baby. And I didn't have that with my first. So I, I did a lot of things recommended in the book. I had lots of nourishing teas and broths and lots of vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, lots of rest. I tried to get as much as I could having a toddler, um, you know, take like accepting help from people when they asked, you know, if I needed anything. Yeah. The recovery was, um, was better than expected. Um, and yeah, I just recommend that other moms, you know, just rest as much as you can and take that time. I know we all want to like get back to our routines and our daily things that we normally do and, you know, our exercise, all that stuff, right? Cause I, I'm really, I'm a big advocate on exercise. And for me, I needed to remind myself that I needed that time. I needed those 40 days, you know, um, to just give my body what it needed to take that time with the baby and my family. Um, so that was me. That was me like wanting so bad to just be normal again and like do all the things again. And just like my body just couldn't. And it, mentally it was like tearing me apart. And I was like, I want to just walk down the street and I can't, <laughs> you know, and it's just like sucked so bad. Yeah. Thank you for that because your body does need that time. And I'm sure there's tons of mothers out there right now that are like in the midst of it that needed to hear that. So, yeah, I, I, I know I needed that. Like I needed that reminder in that book and like a lot of reflecting I did before the birth, I was like, I want to give myself this time. I need like your body needs it's it's you don't have many times in your life where you're it's like after a surgery or after like you know we need to give that time to our bodies like we need to um acknowledge that like our bodies went through something right and we need to refresh our mindset we have our whole lives to like work out we have our whole lives to like check our instagram and our whatever you know posting you yeah. know there's just so many things life is so busy in the 21st century there's so many things coming at us and we need to just like accept this is where we're at and just give ourselves like allow that space in our lives to just be present to like our our body to our family to our baby and like all that other stuff is like, you know, it will, it will be back in your life, like in no time, but really? it's just a short phase. Like it's a short chapter. Right. So like, just embrace that chapter. Yeah. I should have embraced it a lot more. Well, you have a toddler too. <laughs> I'm like, go, go, go. And yeah, Elijah's is not the super easiest. Well, yeah, you have a busy one. I have one too. So I get it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we do our best and, um, they do. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank yeah. you so much, Vanessa. Um, this um, was amazing. I'm sure that it's going to help moms, your story and just getting it out there. So I hope so. Yeah. so much for joining us. And I can't wait to have you back just because you're just such a great mom. Aww, thank you. You're so awesome. <laughs> you on. You've been on my podcast the most. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll let you know, I'm not coming back for <laughs> probably a third baby because I think I'm done. Oh my God. Um, I'm done. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I am happy with my two babies and, um, they are blessings and my life is full. I'm sure. And yours is too. I'm like, I am. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll come back, like, and give you an update. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was that was I was gonna ask you, were you done? Um, but some uh, I know some people are like sensitive about that. Like, you know, they just don't. Yeah. Know sometimes it's too early to think about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm still traumatized from this in the last one. <laughs> um, but thanks so much, and um, guys, don't forget to tune in next week. And thanks for tuning in today. And we will see you guys another time. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. See you next time.